four. Into, into the, the next, next life, life with true Okay, welcome to the Drew and Me podcast. Today we are joined by local Philly comedian Ari um Fishbine. Hello. Hi Drew. Thank you for having me on the show. I love it. I love um, to sing the theme. Thank you very much, Ari. Um, thank you for being on the show. Do you have anything you do you have any creative projects or any shows, any podcasts that you'd like to promote at this time? No, I haven't done anything in two years or something. <laughs> I guess I still I don't I will I will be doing a Twitch stream of my show. Let's start a cult sometime in the next I don't know month or so. <laughs> let's say so. If you want to follow me on some social media, you can see when I do that, or just don't, or it doesn't matter. That's really cool. Um, is it streaming anywhere other than Twitch? Because I'd like to see it too. Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I was thinking of doing it on YouTube. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> it will be on Let's Start a Cult. No. Uh, let's Start a Cult dot online is the website domain I bought that redirects to my Twitch. So anybody can just go there. Okay, so uh, the what? one time in the next month okay, for the so one said, hour in the next month that it's okay, live, so did, whenever that is. It's what started a cult dot online. Online, and you can find it on Twitch. Yeah, that's right. It's on Twitch as Let's Start a Cult as well. Okay, awesome. Um. Yeah, uh, Let's Start a Cult was the show that um, you did at the Good Good Comedy Theater. Um, yes, And R.I.P. And honestly, I never got to go to Let's Start a Cult, but I heard it was really good. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun to do. It was a good show. It was me doing a PowerPoint for one hour and nothing else. But it was fun. It was an enter. I know that makes it sound boring, but it was about an interesting topic uh, that I found on the internet. Mm. And you know what, Drew? The internet is also where I watch some of my favorite shows. How about you? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, streaming is really fun. Um, and. Uh... Today on Drew and Me, we're going to talk about TV shows. Uh, we're going to talk about favorite episodes of The Office and favorite episodes of Seinfeld. And you can stream The Office on if you have a if you have a if you have a, 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 a if you have a, 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 a Peacock account, you can stream on Peacock. That's right. And Seinfeld is coming to Netflix, so you can Seinfeld. stream it on Netflix. Which Seinfeld, Seinfeld like the is whole coming to Netflix. TV. I was <laughs> trying. I have been trying to torrent it ever since it left Hulu okay. unsuccessfully. Nobody's seeding this thing. Mm. I'm trying. I'm trying to torrent it. Nobody's seeding. Nobody's mm. letting me illegally torrent. Uh, 25 year old episodes of Seinfeld anymore. What kind of society do we live in when um, no one's out there providing uh, easy ways to illegally download uh, 100 gigabytes of nine seasons of Seinfeld? I'm just crying. I'm breaking up just thinking about it. Um, I kind of like that we're going more legit. I I, I like agree, but they took it off. They took it off the legit thing, and now and then I had to find it somewhere else. That's true. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, Do your guests not commit to crimes right off the top usually? Um, uh, we like to keep certain things quiet. So. Okay. You know, okay. it's cool. Um, okay. You know, or we like to be 
as you know squeaky clean as possible that so if you sense. could that refrain from, if you could re refrain from cursing or swearing that'd be great just so it's accessible to all audiences oh yeah okay great I will do at the that. same time if you really want to curse it's okay but okay no okay. no <laughs> there's no need to curse talking about these things it's only tv <laughs> um um uh, um Let's see. So, for favorite office episodes, let's start yes. with ten. What is your tenth favorite episode of The Office? My tenth favorite episode of The Office is Casino Night, the one where Jim and Pam kiss. Mm -hmm. That's the tenth favorite. It's a pretty good episode overall. Michael has two dates. Very classic sitcom premise. <laughs> Michael has two dates to the casino night, which is a, a, a thing I haven't ever heard of outside of this episode of this show, that a company would hold a casino night to ostensibly raise money <laughs> or something like that. I don't really get what is supposed to be happening in it. Uh, but that episode has to be number 10, just because it seems like a big episode of the show. The first few seasons are probably going to have all of my favorite episodes. Um, just because I don't, <laughs> I don't, when I rewatch this show, I don't go past season like five. I definitely don't go past like the Michael episodes, mm. the Michael Scott episodes. I'm gotcha. Like, yeah. That's my hard wall <laughs> of rewatching The Office. But I think, okay. Uh, yeah, Casino Night, the season two finale, that's going to be my number 10, Drew. What's yours? Ooh. Um, no, Casino is a good one. Um, was that also the episode with when he's dating the realtor, when he's dating Nancy Carell, who is yes. his wife in real life, which yes. is cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. I do love when that happens when somebody is dating on the show and it's their wife in real life. Uh, That's it's really one of the best feelings on, on TV. Because you know it's like real chemistry, it's authentic. That's like, right. And it's kind of a secret from the audience. And then you find out later and you're like, wow, they did a trick on me. Yeah. That guy was kissing his wife the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, just to jump ahead a little bit, uh, we're going to get into Seinfeld later, but I know from the audio commentary on the DVDs that Jerry Seinfeld said he was very uncomfortable with doing the makeout scenes with the actresses on the show. It's like he said, I never really liked the makeout scenes. Um, Interesting. Which I guess because it's like kind of forced in 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 in, in intimacy. So. On some level, it's like fake, or you, you don't really. It's also really personal and like private. And if you don't know the person that well, it could be really uncomfortable. So um, that's true. I think also maybe the women on the show <laughs> that he kept writing, he kept having to make out with a hot woman on every show. And I think maybe the women were like, oh no, I have to make out with Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> every episode i think maybe he was feeling some of that back to him where he's like oh come on he's just like writing every <laughs> into every episode but the, he has a new hot girlfriend yeah um, that's a problem he created he didn't have to do that <laughs> yeah and also it probably also depended on the day there were probably some days he was probably more, more comfortable about it and some days wasn't because with a lot of people it depends on the day so yeah that's true that's true um so the day the audio commentary he was probably just like i'm not into it but also it was a few years removed but i think there was some truth to that like i think it did make him feel a little bit uncomfortable and that was also before he was married um he wasn't married when he was on the show so that's good he, he got married i think close to the finale or after the finale and he i remember him saying in his stand-up that singlehood was about at like age 46 or his late 40s that was about as far as singlehood could go 
so he was re he was ready to get married. Um, no, that wasn't that that wasn't his stand up. That he had taken singlehood as far. So he's like, I gotta get married now. And then he has three kids. I'm sure he's an awesome dad. Um, and I know he speaks about his kids fondly. He loves his wife. He will loves his kids. So I think fatherhood cool. probably really suits Jerry Seinfeld. So yeah, probably. Um, he does always seem like kind of an old man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, wait, what's your number 10 episode, Drew? Ah, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, ooh. Um, that's a good point. Uh... The murder episode. Um, let's see. I'm not sure which season it's from. It's one of the later ones. Um, it might be five or six. Um, so it's like mid to late. Um, it's where they do a murder mystery in the office. And yes. they're in the meeting room. And whenever they're in the meeting room, it, it can only mean good things. It can only mean it's going to be really funny and there's going to be like great character interactions and it's a great ensemble piece and it's going to be really, really funny and it's going to be so witty and it's going to be so cl clever. So I really like when they're in the meeting room, like in the meet and they're in the meeting room for like the majority of the episode because they're doing the murder mystery and the way, um, um, the way the Andy character, uh, Ed, 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 Ed Helms says, it comes off the tongue of like molasses for her, <laughs> um, how you get, uh, he's, it's Savannah, right? Um, for the murder yeah. mystery. It's a Savannah murder mystery. <laughs> um, I, love how he does that accent so that's actually the main reason why i will like the episode um pretty much just because he does that accent and because they're in the meeting room and they're having fun kind of similar to what they did on the diversity day i'm not sure if that's an episode on your list but um um it's like the whole episode basically takes place in the meeting room and yeah, like a battle episode yeah Seinfeld has some of those too, some famous battle episodes. Mm. They're good. I like. I always like that concept on a TV show. Yeah, uh, and it shows how much like you can get out of a small space or small setting or a, a controlled space or setting, and you don't have to jump to a lot of different scenes. And also, it's probably cheaper to film because less locations, less sets. Um, yeah, I think it's famously, or when I have heard about this concept, it's been like the budget for the show. It's like they <laughs> need they need to do one of these episodes that take place in one room because it's like they just blew their budget on another episode. So they're like, we need to do something that's like on the regular set and nothing else. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Um, um, that is a good one though the the burner mystery party why are they doing that and it's like oh it's another it's actually another theme in the show where like something horrible is happening with the larger company and it's like about to close or something <laughs> or it's like getting sold isn't it something like that I'm not sure um was it a Michael thing like did Michael just want to do it? Was it just the thing he wanted to do? Like PC was No, I, I think they're doing it to distract from something else that's happening. Oh. I think possibly Dunder Mifflin is being sold to Sabre or is going out of business or something okay. like that. Okay. okay. Or something. Okay. And, and, and it's isn't one of the episodes where like Jim is also the boss? It's like Jim and Michael are the boss together. They're co-boss oh. for that season. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> be confusing. yeah i'm not sure um uh let's see i'm not sure um yeah uh 
when they switch bosses on the show, it's usually really funny. Those episodes are usually really good. Um, that is true. But when Steve Carell left, it, it was pretty much a different show when like Andy takes over and they bring in Robert California, uh, yeah. played by um, James Spader. Um, yeah, like the tempo of the show changes, the the feel, the tone, like the whole show pretty much changed. like it is almost a different show <laughs> at that point. Um, um but uh no, uh those episodes are still really solid. And as the show aged, it kinda gave them a chance to explore some of the other characters, like the Angela character. Um Angela she gets married, so that's cool. Um, you know, you get more of the Angela character and more of the, the other characters. So, um yeah, uh, it gave the show a little bit of a chance to grow and expand. Um, of course, the Steve Pearl episodes are the best, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I've seen all the other ones, but I just don't... I, I just don't re-watch them. So I don't yeah. know them as well. They're not, like, in my mind. Yeah. But that is a good one. Yeah. Um... What is your number nine favorite episode, Ari? Number nine, I'm going to go with... Well, what is the name of this episode? It might be... Okay, it's called Broke. And it's okay. the last episode with the Michael Scott paper company where Ooh. they find out they're broke, but then they they get bought out by Thunder Mifflin. I think that episode is really funny. I like the whole subplot with the michael scott paper company i like that it makes no sense and it is a disaster but he makes money off it by essentially (laughs) threatening his company into hiring him because he's just going to lose money forever because he is so stupid he will just open new companies Uh, i think that's a funny threat that he leverages into jobs for these characters i like that it brings ryan back who is funny i think bj novak is funny um it makes pam into a salesperson which is good i think her character probably needed like a little bit of growth and uh development after failing as an artist in new york which sucks like her character is so bad it's like she's a secretary and then she goes to new york and can't be in art school anyone can be in art school art's not hard me and Drew will tell you it's easy. <laughs> Yay! Okay, okay. You just go up there and do it. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, Pam deserved a win, and she became a salesperson. So uh, good for her. And uh, what else funny? Oh, Idris Elba is is the guest oh. boss in that season, and he's so good. Um, it's always funny when you get what's his name. Who's their boss? The CEO. Oh, um... David Wallace. David Wallace. David David Wallace. Wallace, Funny, boss character. Yeah. That episode has a lot going on. Yeah. I'm going to go with season five, episode 25, Broke. Broke. (laughs) I have a list up on my computer, so I know what the numbers are. Very cool. Um, Yeah. Um... I agree, Broke's really interesting, and honestly, probably my favorite part of the episode is the relationship between Steve Crow and Jenna Fisher. Um, would yeah, like Pam and Michael. I think the episode's really interesting, and it's interesting that Pam turns into like his mom, kind of um, <laughs> like um, a- as like they're running like the paper company, and I think there's something really kind of wholesome and adorable and very um, warm about like the their relationship in that episode and Pam's really trying to make it work. And it's interesting that she would leave for Michael, that she like believes in it that much because in the early, early seasons, like it's clear, she's just doing it because it's a job. And because Michael's running the office, it's pretty easy. Like her, her gig is pretty, like she answers the phones. She takes notes. Um, uh, about it um uh yeah like and she takes a chance 
because she wants like a raise basically or like a different job and uh yeah. i guess to michael's credit he lets her do it but he is desperate for any help and he can't do it alone because he is yeah. dumb yeah um let's talk about it michael's not a, not the smart character folks um he makes foolish decisions many times over i think he's just gets very excited about certain things <laughs> and he did do the golden ticket campaign which was like a really good idea so um that's true that's true that is his one like really good okay. idea <laughs> yeah. and that he then pushes on someone else because yeah. he's a small man though and he doesn't um, like getting in trouble <laughs> yeah um the golden ticket was good uh is that one of your episodes no um one of my episodes is the well um could probably probably don't have to go in strict order um n- number well, four. You, no you can you can do your number nine do your number nine cool all right all right, all right. um uh, let's see uh number nine for me would be uh or goodbye uh goodbye or toby um parts one and two um yes i would i think that was going to be my number eight <sighs> so that's good uh it's when holly uh joins the office staff and um um toby is leaving i think he's going to costa rica right Yes, Toby's okay. going on <laughs> like a vacation to Costa Rica. It turns out. Yeah. So um he's leaving and uh Michael assumes Holly's gonna be really boring, but then he really likes her because she's really funny. So they have like a really good relationship and it's really cute and it's really funny when they're taking apart Toby's chair and Toby comes over and he's like uh what did you guys uh or do and and, um, <laughs> and then um toby says we still have to do like the x interview and um yeah between the the chair being taken apart and the x interview it's one of my favorite episodes and i think part two is when they have the party outside for Toby, which is also really funny. Um, so between those two aspects, but um, the chair being taken apart scene, I think it's probably up there with my favorite one or two moments of the show. When just like when Toby says like, what did you guys do? Like it, it's, it's such perfect comedic timing by the actor who plays Toby um, by a, uh, or, or Paul uh, or Lieberstein like he just he just delivers it so excellently and you can tell that like the Michael character is like so over him <laughs> so um or not over him but he's distracted because he's with Holly so it's kind of a mix of that so that's really interesting but yeah his reaction is just so good and then the look on Michael's face when Paul Lieberstein says we still got to do the exit interview. And Michael's like, yes, <laughs> we do. And he's like all excited about that, which is interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> because for whatever reason, and it's not really explained, but the Michael character hates Toby. Um, yeah, which He's incredibly cruel to him for no reason. Like, which, this is something I love about this episode, and that's why it's my number eight is okay. that it's like it's really one of the last times you see m- how michael was initially introduced which is just like this stupid like really cruel boss who's mean to a lot of characters for no reason it's like like the ricky gervais character in the uk office i feel like is a lot meaner and like more rude and weird no. than michael turns out to be but Michael sort of starts out that way in like season one. He's like insanely rude. He's like always interrupting and screaming. Um, 
And I think most of that goes away throughout the seasons because you start liking Steve Carell and you start liking this like goofy character and he starts having like nice moments where like he goes to Pam's art show or whatever. It's like he's kind of nice in a way, which Ricky Gervais was never in that other show. Yeah. But his the most cruelty he carries through is that he's really mean to Toby for truly no reason. And it, it is kind of played off like Toby's like a wet blanket. But I really don't think any 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 time he's been mad at Toby, Toby had done anything wrong okay. other than just doing his job. So I think it is funny that he has to like <laughs> especially I love that scene in the exit interview where he has to like uh sort of come to grips with how weird what he's doing is in front of holly because she's like why do you give him a rock what is what is that and it's like oh no it's a joke and then pam basically makes michael give toby his watch um so i think that is like kind of like funny comeuppance for him and also is sort of just like um for the character, I think an important moment because he doesn't really do that kind of stuff anymore after that very much. I feel like yeah. he's not just like messing with people no. for no reason other than with Toby when he comes back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You could kind of make the same comparison for kind of Jim and Dwight. Um, the yeah. kind of the Jim and Dwight um, relationship progression or their kind of like storyline kind of does mature and um, they are more cordial to each other later in the show. And Jim is like pranking Dwight a lot less um, because like maybe he just understands he can actually get work done in the time that it takes to come up with these elaborate pranks on Dwight. Yeah. Like Dwight's wallet in the vending machine like his personal belongings in the vending machine was probably the best one <laughs> so, um, but uh that takes time like first he has to like he first has to they all are very the items from dwight and then he has to talk to the or vending machine guy who is his friend and he has to put them in the vending machine like that probably it's takes an much. hour. It's so like, long, yeah. Commutively, that probably honestly like takes an hour to do. Which oh, it's stealing. Yeah, theft, crime, stealing. <laughs> theft, um, crime. Uh, we don't um, talk about that on this podcast. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Um. So. Like. Yeah. <laughs> um. But he matures and. I guess Michael with Toby it just kind of kind of gets better even though he frames Toby in a later episode of Yeah, I think Anna. that's probably the low point. Yeah, a caprizi salad, but you could but say that is a funny episode. I don't think it's one of my top 10, but it is funny. Okay. When Toby comes back. And if you want to make the best of a bad situation, he does give Toby a free salad. He gives Toby a Caprizi salad. So I know Caprizi salad is so good. Yeah, man. So you know, he could have the salad. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was my eight, I guess. Do you want to do your number eight? Um. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Well, I guess my like. I guess my like nine and eight was goodbye Toby because I did parts one and two. Okay. So that counts as kind of like two episodes. Um so um uh I can go with I can do my seven. Yeah. Okay. I think my seven is gonna be the Office Olympics. I think that episode is funny. I think it's one of the better like early early episodes i think it's like early season two yeah really funny episode it's funny to see like uh jim like excited at work because he's doing something like stupid i think that's very relatable feeling when you're like mm. at an office job and then 
just doing something that is like totally incidental to your actual work yeah. duties is actually like the fun part of the job. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's just uh, screwing around, but it is still yeah. fun to do. And yeah. then <laughs> the stuff that's going on with um, Michael and White uh, at the condo is funny too. Oh, yeah. Where Michael is buying the condo and he is <laughs> like progressively just uh realizing he's making a dumb decision but he still keeps going with it because he's too far into the process of buying the house so he buys the condo and it's the introduction of uh the aforementioned uh wife who is subsequently kissed <laughs> Uh, Nancy Carell, aka what's her character's name? Um, Carol. Carol, that's right. Yeah. So that is my number seven. That's a good one. Um, when Jim says closing ceremonies. Oh to, yeah. Uh, I think to Pam, uh, that's really good, and he's also excited about like learning the office games too, about like. Like kind of the interworkings of when they don't want to work, when they just want to play. Um, yeah. Which, uh, like, he gets to learn uh, um, Dunderball from Toby. And um, kind of table football from uh, um from Kevin and Oscar. Uh, Oscar. The fact that even Oscar plays games at the office is really surprising because like he's so he's so competent and like focused and hardworking. Like it seems like he's always working. And yeah. And he's always like, I think that's realistic. I feel like he he's like he's a chiller. Oscar's cool. But Angela, she doesn't have a game, except she counts how many times Pam or Jim walks with hit to Pan's desk. That's really funny, actually. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, that's really funny. Um, and she calls it Pam Pong. That's really funny. Um. Yeah. Um, when the office gets really kind of uh, or meta like that, I feel like those are some of the strongest moments when it's kind of like a joke within a joke. It's kind of like a joke on its own culture and its own show. And it's a testament to how strong the show is and how like, developed the characters are. Yeah, I agree. For sure. Um... Let's see, number seven for me would be uh, or beach games. Um, and uh, also the funniest moment is just that uh, Toby's not allowed to go um, because again, Michael and Toby don't like each other. No, actually, I don't think Toby has a real issue with Michael. Um, I think Toby wishes the office was run a little better and that they would stick yeah. to the HR guidelines. Yeah. Or that Michael would listen to his HR guidelines. Um, but uh, um, it's just to be funny fair, that Toby like, is kind of annoying. Mm, Even like as a character is written as annoying on purpose, so that you kind of have to side with Michael sometimes. Um, 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 um. I think it's really interesting that Toby like didn't like um that like he did get excited and he did honestly want to go to the beach and I think he has like a hat and like he has like sunscreen and he's all ready to go and Michael's like nope you're not going so you know just kind of really kind of um closes his door and shatters Toby's dreams a little bit there which yeah but in the episode, do you remember if they show what Toby's doing in the office? Like, do you think he actually does get things? Like, does he have a problem? Yeah, I feel today? like they never really even cut back to him. I would have just leave if I was him. Hmm. 
I feel like he probably stayed. He probably did stay. But if I was him, I would leave. Like, I think. Actually, no. You know what? If I was him, I, I would have probably just hung out there all day. I would have been like, well, I'm already at the office. Yeah. And I don't have anything to do at home. And no one's here. So I would have just probably sat on my computer all day, like, on the internet. Mm. And gone home. Um, if Toby would have gotten things done, that probably would have been really good. Um, uh, at the office that day, like, and he probably would have been more productive without other people distracting him. And at that point in the show, does Kelly sit next to Toby in the office or are they not next to each other? No, I, I think they are next to each other. I think they're always next to each other. And then okay. the difference is Ryan goes back there at some point okay. as punishment for Toby. <laughs> I actually think Toby and uh, the Kelly character sitting next to each other is good. like Because like he probably needs to loosen up a little bit and be like a little bit more upbeat. And she probably needs <laughs> to be a little bit more chill. So, you know, I feel like it's a pretty good match. Um, I guess like office fan fiction would be what if Toby and Kelly got together? <laughs> <laughs> That's your fan fiction. <laughs> I bet there is fan fiction of that. People probably do. Um, Stan ship them. People probably do ship them. Uh, I think that would be a good couple, honestly. Yeah, they would probably be good for each other, but I don't think that it would happen. No. I think they're too and, different. Like, Toby is a daughter, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. So Kelly would kind of have... But Kelly would probably Toby's, think his daughter. I, yeah, I, I feel like Kelly would be a good mom, to be honest. Yeah, Kelly seems caring. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is, I think that that's like my number three three or four episodes of beach games one i really like that one i think um it's also like one of the good storyline episodes or whatever like the jim and pam episodes is an important jim and pam episode <laughs> because pam uh runs on the coals or whatever yeah. and decides to stand up for herself yeah although she does sort of really it is weird to karen what she does Strange to do it in front of Karen. Not Karen's fault. <laughs> no, I feel like, and I feel like Karen's okay with that, which is cool. Like, I, I actually really like the Karen character a lot, and she's pretty tolerant of like everything. But she's not okay with that. She gets in a fight with Jim after. Oh, yeah. I the whole, the, whole ne the next about episode, it's like her and Jim have been fighting because. He has, like, whatever. He had feelings for Pam or still has or whatever. Oh. But I think Karen as a character is given short shrift. Although she comes back later and it's, like, a funny, like, thing because she's the boss at Utica. Yeah. There are so many places. Every single branch of Dunder Mifflin I had to look up where it is. I'm like, where is this? What is Utica? No. It's in, like, New Hampshire or Connecticut or something. No, um, <laughs> um, um, mm, um, all right, should I do my number six? Uh, yeah, I guess you guys in upstate New York, right? Oh, yeah, it's in New York, that's right. Cool, that makes sense. I don't know. No. Oh. I obviously don't know. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Ooh, wow. Um, uh, yeah. Um, you can go ahead with your n n number six. Okay, for number six, I'm gonna go with the fun run episode one, where. Uh, Michael hits <laughs> Meredith with his car. I think that's a very funny joke in this show. Something that <laughs> literally is totally unexpected when he hits her with his car. That's so funny that that happens. And then the whole 
stupid like i really like the stupid way he makes it about rabies like he makes it about like how no one would have known <laughs> she wouldn't have known that she had rabies and she would have died without it so it's actually the fun run isn't for meredith who got hit with a car it's for Meredith. it's for rabies awareness something that's not necessary and doesn't affect that many people um I don't know. It's just a good episode. He eats a lot of uh, fettuccine Alfredo and wants to throw up. Toby makes out good in this episode because he's given Imodium, also something that I did not understand as a kid and uh, needed to <laughs> look up. So apparently he didn't have to go to the bathroom. Is that a big problem for people who race? I don't know. I assume so. Um, but good for him. He wins. He wins the race four kilometers from the office or 10 kilometers from the office, whatever it is, or five is the normal one, I guess. Um, and then I guess they all have to walk back later, which is also funny. Um, let's see. The weird thing about this episode is the one where Jim and Pam are dating for the first time. Um, and I think that made the show bad <laughs> as soon as they started dating. <laughs> I think it got worse uh, because that like part of it was gone, but it's fine. It had to happen eventually if you're going to keep going with the show. So it's normal. And I like the shirts. I like the shirts that they made for the fun run. Those are all my reasons. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh... Yeah, I think they're really good reasons, Ari. Um, like, okay. it's a very developed episode, um, which it's like super. And it's Michael being ambitious. Like, he is ambitious a lot, but I, I feel like his heart is in the right place for this episode. Oh, I totally disagree. <laughs> okay. Um, like he's motivated and he's doing something and they actually do accomplish something. Um, the fettuccine Alfredo, if he would have just had the pasta and not had the sauce, he might've done better. But um, because I think it was the sauce that got him. Um, but uh, um, I, I guess it's mixed whether carbo loading does help you before like a runner or something. I Supposed yeah, depends on the that. person. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on the person and your restrictions and the type of diet you're on. So, um, but uh, no, I kind of like what Michael's doing. Um, uh, um, he kind of does make a lot of mistakes in the episode, like, um uh yeah like the hitting with the car is like terrible like <laughs> he should probably be in jail well <laughs> i i think his heart is not in the right place because he he is actually directly trying to um skirt blame for hitting meredith with a scar by making it all about her rabies when it has nothing that's not the reason why she's in the hospital <laughs> So yeah. he, he ran her over and then yeah. ma made this whole thing about like, oh, and then I think the second part of that, maybe there's two parts of this episode. He also like says there's like a curse and they have to get rid of the curse in the office that hit Meredith with his car mm. and made all these other bad things happen. So he's definitely not taking responsibility at all. Okay. Um... I feel like in a weird Michael kind of way, it does work out, but it does, it does. Because then he has to throw up at the end in front of everybody. <laughs> Do you remember that? That is how it ends. Okay. Um he throws up from the fettuccine Alfredo before yeah. he could finish the run. Yeah, that's cool. Um yeah, uh um yeah. Yep. 
It's cool. Um, oh yeah. Um, that's cool. Um, interesting. Um, no, that makes sense. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, I'm glad we didn't do 20 episodes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I totally get you. Um, yeah, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Number five for me would be the return, where is when. Uh, 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 Os Oscar was gone and then he comes back and it's a good Ed Helms episode it's a really good Andy episode because Andy is kind of just having a lot of fun and he calls Jim or Big Tuna and um, he's like I just caught like big tuna like oh this huge fish and he's like i'm gonna reel it in and then, um uh and kind of like reeling in the tuna and that's probably another one of my favorite moments in the show and then him recording rock and robin on his phone is really funny um which oh God. kids today probably don't even know what standard flip phones are like they all only grow up with smartphones so like what's a flip phone um but yeah, um, i was watching that last time i saw that episode i was thinking about that of like this is such a specific thing like making your own ringtone is like not anything anymore uh, at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> i honestly like, give him a lot of credit for doing that because that's, time that's really consuming. creative yeah yeah and i think it's him singing the different parts yeah on the ringtone which is really funny um so there's good andy stuff in there but um uh jim just jim and pam kind of find him really annoying so they, they're like let's just get rid of him so um uh they hide his phone and then he punches a hole in the wall and he has to go to anger management so I, I like that he does go to anger management though. Like I, I like that he doesn't get fired, but that yeah. they like try to fix the issue, which, because yeah. I think they think he, he's mostly fine. You know, <laughs> he just kind of had an off day. So um, I hope he had to pay for the plaster and the wall because <laughs> they had to replaster it. So, you know, uh, I don't like, know. I, he I hope he it. didn't have to pay for that. I hope the company paid. <laughs> They made him stressed. <laughs> yeah, he was he was put into a stressful situation by his coworkers. To be fair, That's which true. is his phone ringing and then not being able to find it. Yeah, it's okay. totally cool. Yeah, my what is it? Number five now. Number five episode. Yes, sir. With business school, the one where Ryan takes Michael to business school. I think that so was really funny. So funny. It's great. Their relationship is great. It's great that Michael is revealed to know nothing about business and he's really embarrassed about it. I like the speech he gives where he throws the chocolate bars. Um, it's all really good. And then he like, oh, this is the episode, in fact, where he puts Michael or he puts Ryan in the annex with Kelly and Toby. I think. I think he, instead of firing Ryan, he makes him put his stuff in the annex and <laughs> work with Kelly to punish Toby. So that is also funny. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of a good exposing michael type thing but it's also good for like education like to kind of learn what a business class c can look like and also that um it's also revealed later even when ryan graduates from business school that he doesn't really know what he's doing because yeah that's true so 
it's kind of like um do you want to kind of do the or fake it till you or make it strategy like michael's doing like kind of pretend to know what you're doing or do you want to be ryan who eventually cheats who commits fraud and he cheats and he gets fired because he cheats so do you want to lie and cheat or do you want to pretend so those are kind of their two management styles um with michael yeah, pretending do you want to lie sometimes he gets lucky to everyone else or do you want to just lie to yourself enough that you think that it's true that you should have this job or like you are a competent boss yeah um that's funny yeah um uh, um um yeah uh mm, yeah um mm, see um yeah um let's see um uh yeah um it's probably good that ryan doesn't run the office anymore so because he would just get too ambitious so that's true <laughs> that's true and like when Michael gets ambitious, it's a, it's usually like a one time thing, and it usually will fizzle, and it it won't hurt the company that much. Yeah, but... Ryan's dangerous. He's dangerous to other people. Michael will, Michael's destruction is like self contained. <laughs> Sometimes, um, in the episode we just talked about, um, and uh, in the charity run episode. Michael does do destruction to Meredith and he Okay, true, true, true. So <laughs> that's when it's bad. But that's not Michael being ambitious, that's just him being stupid. So okay. he wasn't paying attention to the no. road. Yeah. Also the face the face Meredith makes in that episode when she's run over is really funny. What is her name? She's from Philly, that woman. Uh Kate Flannery. Kate Flannery. That's awesome. Yeah, she's I know she signs something at helium. I think it's in like the helium glass. Um, I've seen her at that bar um, that used to be, I think it closed or maybe it's changed now. What is that bar that was like down the street from helium and fit? It was like an Irish pub where all the improvisers went. Anyway, I've seen her down in some bar in Philly. It's Really She's cool. cool. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh. Boy. Um. Yeah. She's really funny. Um. A friend of mine did. Uh, was a production assistant on. Um, a Hallmark Channel movie that she did. I think it was called the christmas pageant and he said that he got to um do some things on set when she was acting in scenes so he, he got to hear when she was acting in scenes and there are some scenes that she was like really over the top and they're really loud and he said yep i could hear from like the other side <laughs> so she's very good at projecting and um a lot of time in the office you don't really hear her talk but she can project so she kind of yells a lot in the office. Mm. She yells. She yells about her minivan and other things. Mm. She has a good character, funny character. Yeah, I kind of wish they gave her more to do. They gave her a little, little, little bit more of an arc. Um, because there are some episodes that she does really shine in. Like, um, it's not on my the list. Christmas but... one is good. Yeah, Christmas is good. She's really good in, let's see, when Ryan starts the fire. She's really good in the fire um, because uh, she talks about doing the, um, the like, 
spinning the clay on the wheel from the movie uh, oh, yeah. or Ghost, which I think is her best moment of her, her physical comedy in the series when she's like, does that. Yeah, that's funny. But if you don't get the reference, then that joke's lost. <laughs> um, even though the physicality is really good, though. So it is really good or physical comedy. Um, so it kind of does work on two levels. Um, um, yeah. Um, let's see. So my number four would be, uh, would be, uh, or basketball. Um, uh, uh, I think it's really funny that Michael's like, okay, we'll see who gets to work. And it's kind of his crew against the warehouse and Daryl's crew. And it ends up being like really close. And you can see John Krasinski actually knows how to play basketball, which I think is really cool. And he's actually really good. So um, like that's really awesome. Um, Wait, is John Krasinski personally really good at basketball? I think so. Oh, okay. oh, I'm not sure how good. Um, I mean, the character is good. Yeah, uh, he's really strong. Um, he can lift a fair amount. Um, yeah, now now he's buff. Now that he's an action star. Oh, uh, I think even before that he was strong. <laughs> he was strong the whole time yeah what and he yeah. was a and he was jim when he was being jim he was strong yeah uh, that's such a lie to me i know they, not they, supposed to be they strong. could have done more with it i know they could have had him like work in the warehouse like he could have, like <laughs> yeah, the foreman if he would have like switched places with like Ro- with like roy or daryl like he could have been yeah, he could have been. <laughs> so like... funny to me, the idea that he should just like, yeah, he should have just switch jobs because he's strong. They should have just put him in the warehouse. Uh, actually, honestly, the character of Jim would probably like to work in that warehouse more. Actually, no, he would actually find it equally monotonous. Definitely. Yeah, he'd be bored. And... Yeah. Making fun of Daryl is really risky. So, for a lot of reasons. So, I feel like he wouldn't prank Daryl. No, he wouldn't. But he's cool with Daryl. He's yeah. friends with Daryl. Yeah. I think... He's always friends with the warehouse guys. They like, there's that one episode where they have the auction and they like go for a drink with him. And they like just like go out and have fun instead of doing the auction. That's no. fun. No. Yeah. Um that's interesting. No. Um oh um yeah. So where are we at four? I think I my number four was had to be uh the beach game one. So I'll just move on to three. I don't know okay. how we're we're this must be we've evened out somehow. Absolutely. I think my number three is the dinner party. That's the most hashtag awkward episode ever. Okay. Um, it's just Michael and Jan, the one where they have a dinner party with Pam and Jim and Andy and Angela. And then Dwight shows up with his old babysitter. Oh, yeah. Um, that's really funny. And then Michael and Jan just really scream at each other really, really loud uh for basically the whole time and also uh, they're being weird throughout it and nobody's able to eat because jan's thing is still um in the oven at like 10 p.m um so that is a funny episode i like that one yeah um yeah the <laughs> um yeah, kind of the Serenity or by Jan. Um, oh, yeah, that's her, funny subplot, too. Yeah, um, her own, I think it's Candles. Or is it Candles or is it Scents? It's Candles. Um, okay, 
yeah her own like candle company that's really funny and it works very well for the character um so um yeah um yeah i really like jan in the episode i think she's really funny um in the episode um played by malora harden i think it's the name of the actress and yeah i think she's really good in it so yeah um yeah it's a good one. <laughs> oh, and does does uh jan's personal assistant does hunter he, he had his key show yeah the i party? think his no i think he is um his music plays a big role oh. in it because whenever she's upset she turns on his really bad song oh, okay it's like you took me by the hand and made me a man and then it goes one night and that's what uh they're always singing it's a really bad song you can probably cut it in here without uh getting a whatever cease and desist copyright infringement yeah you can probably paste it in like 15 seconds because it's like a comedy song it's not even a real song so they can't possibly be searching for it you would think i'm sure it has a falling like that there are some fans (laughs) of the office out there like it is so is such a popular show that honestly people probably like search everything of the office like so but that's, that's true, awesome. but I'm wondering if it's a copyrighted real song, even oh. though it's not a real like a piece of media. It's just a, f- oh. a fake song from a TV show. But someone must have written it. Hmm. So Greg Daniels, go get a copyright for that song, or <laughs> you better re 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 release it. Mm-hmm. You better, or Drew's gonna release it on this podcast for free. No. no. <laughs> um no uh and you can't do anything about it greg daniels yeah um you have no legal recourse nbc yeah. universal yeah um cool um let's see uh number four for me is pretzel bag um oh nice i t- always forget about that one I really like how excited Stanley and Michael get. It's like the most excited you see Stanley because of Pretzel Day. And at the end of the episode, he counts the days until the next Pretzel Day. Um, So that's funny. And Michael also has like things he has to do. He just has to initial some things, I think. Or He has like three things that he has to do every like quarter month and every two weeks or something and one day every quarter at all is on the same day yeah and he doesn't want to do any of it and jan wants to write down wants pan to write down everything that michael does so uh Pam does this um because it's also Michael being really unproductive so um that's funny and yeah um no it's a really funny episode um and there's a Gary Glitter song that plays in the episode that's really funny and then Kevin Brian Baumgartner he sings along to it which is great it's a great kevin moment um there's a lot of great kevin moments in the show like like they're kind of the hidden gems of the show when like you see like kevin like really have like a really good like one-liner a good moment or a good kind of like the interview stuff with the camera him like talking to the camera so he is like a good interviewer or something like that like but there's some really good Kevin moments in there, and I feel like he's really good in Pretzel Day. Yeah, I like Kevin. I think the character is done sometimes a disservice. I think at some point they have like kind of a Homer Simpson problem with him where they've made him yeah. too stupid accidentally. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure at one point he's like, he's listing letters and he's like, 
A, A B C D F L M N O P <laughs> combines L M N and O into one letter. It's, that is insane. It's telling me this man doesn't know the alphabet. That is a crazy thing to make into a part of his character. He uh, has a job. He's working. He's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I feel like he's great. I wish they would have gone deeper into his backstory. Um, uh, does Kevin's girlfriend ever show up on the show? Uh, Stacy. I think she shows up a couple times. Oh no, no, the one he that he refers to never shows up, and then they get like. I don't know if it's hinted that she doesn't exist or something. I think she does exist, but I think they they break up at some point, okay. and then he gets a new girlfriend on no. Valentine's Day or something. Oh yeah, and one of the that's I think that's the the plot of one of the episodes. Yeah. I know a lot about the show. I've watched it many times over. <laughs> oh man. Um. Okay, should I go with my next one? Um, yeah, so I think we're up to three. Okay, number three for me is an episode called Traveling Salesman. I think it's in season three, and it's just everybody sort of pairs off. Everybody in the office pairs off into like different groups and goes and does a sale, and it's like, Michael and or no, it's Michael and Andy pair up, and it's Jim and um Dwight and Phyllis with uh Karen, and then it's Stanley with Ryan, and all of those pairs are people you don't really see together a lot, other than Jim and Dwight, but even they're not usually like on the same team, mm-hmm. and. It's funny because they go out and have like a really successful sales call. They're like a good team, even though they're not like good with each other. They're just both good salesmen and they have this like technique they perfected from when working together where they like show the guy that Dunder Mifflin has good customer service or whatever because Uh that, that he's kept on hold. So I think that whole like interplay between them is funny, even though like they're Jim is like pranking Dwight and Dwight is being annoying throughout the trip. They're still like successful. I think that's funny. I think like the, my favorite interaction is probably the one with Stanley and Ryan. And I feel like Stanley doesn't really get that many opportunities to be funny. And I think this is a really funny scene because they go on a sales call to like Stanley's friends who are either a black owned business or a black group but on the way there ryan asked stanley um if he can like lead the sales call not knowing this and so when they show up and it's stanley's friends and they're all black (laughs) i don't know Uh, ryan is just really weird about it and says hi to them one by one every single time and then he's like really nervous and messes it up and then Stanley just laughs at him for like two minutes straight. I feel like that is like a good good scene for Stanley. Funny like interaction between those characters that you never see together. So that's a cool episode. I like that one. Yeah, I, I totally agree. The Stanley and Ryan stuff is probably my favorite part of the episode. Like you kind of get to see a different side of Stanley when he's not like working. You get to see him hanging out, like working with his friends like he's just hanging yeah out. i mean he's not even working because he's letting ryan take the lead and he's yeah. like he literally knows exactly what's gonna happen but he like doesn't care nah. because he doesn't like he's just like having fun so it is just like fun fun to see that part of the character all right yeah. so that's my three okay that's um, let's see um all right uh three for me would be <laughs> um well, michael's uh 
what what Michael's uh uh what 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 Michael's um what what Michael's uh uh birthday would be um number three for me um uh let's see. I think it's the funniest episode pound for pound. I think it's the most well-written episode. Um, Gene Stubnitsky, I think was one of the writers and I forget who the other writer was, but um, I think they also directed the movie uh, 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 Good Boys, which is really funny. Um, So if you haven't seen Good Boys, check it out. I think he directed Good Boys, which he's a really funny writer. <laughs> so mm. yeah, like he's a really good writer. Um, so um, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but no, the episode's really funny. Um, I love the the jersey that Dwight gives him that says "From Dwight." Yeah. Number one, I think that is oh, really yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. And Michael having like a birthday poster and Dwight being the only one who signs it is interesting. And then him going to like the ice rink for Michael's <laughs> birthday is funny too. Um and like creating the arcade, you know, he's just having a good time in the arcade. And I think like the kids at the arcade like know him. Like because he gives them like fake IDs or something. So like, hey, Creed. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's really funny. And Steve Carell, uh, a decent skater. <laughs> like he, he skates yeah. really well in the episode. So um, I give him credit for that um, too. Uh, yeah, actually a pretty good Michael episode and he's actually having a really bad birthday. So he's kind of talking about the terrible birthdays also, which is interesting. And then um, Jim and Pam want to cheer Kevin up because he might have skin cancer. So they get him, which it's good. They, they want to cheer him up. So they get him a cup of noodles because it's his favorite lunch. And they get him, they get him 69 cups and, Jim's like, I know it's crass, but you know, okay. So that's his favorite but it, number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um I don't know how they got that through the sensor. Like, I guess the sensor is like 69. It's just a number. But you're allowed, um, you're allowed to say 69 on TV. <laughs> oh. They let you okay. they let you do it. They let you get away with it. I think if it's something like that, it's like coded enough it's not crass okay like all they said is his favorite number they didn't say what makes it bad yeah so if there's any kids listening it's it's a normal number just a number and also a history lesson part of star 69 you could look up who just called you before call or day you could do star 69 that's right. And we landed on the moon, 1969. Awesome. I don't know. That's right. I'm pretty sure. I think you're right. Yeah. It'd be so that's a history less than in its own. The anniversary. Yeah. In its own right. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Should I move so, on to number two? Yeah. What's your number two, Ari? I'm going to go with the client, the episode where they go to Chili's uh, with Tim Meadows, who's funny, funny guest star. I'm now learning, looking at the Wikipedia for this episode, that it is written by Paul Lieberstein. Very good writer. Is, plays Toby. I didn't know he mm-hmm. wrote for this show. Oh, that's funny. That's cool. It makes me like his character more. Uh-huh. <laughs> also kind of makes sense that he is a writer. It's just like <laughs> playing this character um so that is funny i like that the episode sort of shows you how michael sort of got where he is like he despite jan thinking that he's being like um 
unprofessional or whatever with this guy. He is a good salesman and they, he kind of like closes the sale uh, with Tim Meadows for this like school district, which is a big deal for uh, yeah. Dunder Mifflin. And then at the yeah. office, of course, they find and read Michael's script for Threat Level Midnight, which is oh boy funny. I think it is later turned into its own episode. Um, but that is just a funny, <laughs> a funny idea that Michael has like a bad action script and they read it in the office. It's really good. Um, and I don't know, it's just a nice, nice episode, even though they like stay at the office all night, they're just like the other characters are just having fun. Well, um, you know, Jen and Michael, uh, do their thing with the sale and then they kiss at the end. Oh no, <laughs> kicking off their relationship, their illicit relationship. Mm. Yeah. Um, and their relationship is kind of the heart of the show, to be honest with you. Um, like it's one of the biggest relationships and aspects of the show. I do agree. I thought the show was stronger when they weren't together, but part of that was just to show progression and kind of just how things went. Oh um, yeah, I was talking about Jan and Michael, but also oh Jan and, Jim and Pam's Jim and, Jim and Pam's episode relationship also is sort of kicked off in this episode a little bit. Because they are like kind of being romantic without talking about it. Okay. Um, I agree. Both both make sense. Yeah. Um I kind of wish they would have shown Jim and Pam together more at home. They don't show their home life too much because I feel like that would have been really interesting. Like in the Michael Scott Paper Company episode, you see Michael pick up Pam and you get to see Jim leave her in the morning. And I think that's really interesting. I think it's really different. I think it's really refreshing. You get to kind of see what Jim looks like in the morning. So, um, yeah, I would I, say it seems like kind of one of the rules of the show because it's like supposedly a documentary about the office. But yeah. you see, you see Dwight's home kind of a lot. You see his farm and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, interesting um um yeah um right um yeah so it's a really good one um number two for me is sexual harassment um which is kind of the biggest that's what she said episode which is like one of the big catchphrases from the show and michael has a good time with that and he does some interesting things of when he has to get a lawyer so uh um and the lawyer for the show and just him saying that's what she said is really funny and uh when jim says today he says or Pam's mom is coming later, and Michael's like, "That's what she said." So. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot uh, Pam's mom's the yeah. Pam's mom aspect of the episode is funny. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so that's kind of good lowbrow sophomore humor. Um, it maybe hasn't aged as well now, but um, <laughs> it's really funny, and it's a good Todd Packer episode too. Like it's really solid Todd Packer. And I think Paul Lieberstein wrote sexual harassment as well. And it's really funny. Wow. It's written, and Dwight has questions about the female anatomy and the way Rain Wilson says labia is really funny. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I I, re I re really enjoy the episode um a lot and yeah just great introduction to the top tiger character and then kind of the outro of the episode when Jim's uh, when um Michael's like Dad can't take a bath with the kids anymore Dad can't take a bath <laughs> with, with 
uh, uh, Pam and Jenna Fisher's like, he said what? <laughs> <laughs> which kind of a good way to end it. Um, which it's also probably the kind of thing like she kind of cares in the moment, but then she probably doesn't care. She's like, okay, it's Michael. He says stupid stuff like that. So it's Michael. He says stupid insensitive things like that so um but the character does get more likable and steve carell does say things like that all us in the show well which is good you know it's good to see him get more likable and kind of mature and then in the episode where he leaves him and pam share a really good moment of where they hug and you kind of really feel like they had like a strong connection, which I was never happy with that moment because it didn't feel earned to me because you only feel that in a few episodes that, that they actually liked each other. Like I think Pam finds Michael entertaining and she doesn't have to work very hard, but I don't know how much she actually likes him. So, but maybe she does actually feel that way all along and like the true feelings kind of come out later, but um, that hug should have been with Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> like just in all honesty, like it, it was more of a Dwight hug than a Pam because how much do they even like each other? Like when she works at the Michael Scott paper company, oh yeah. Like you really see like the dedication and like the respect and the willingness to try something that's not going to work out really well um even though it does but just because michael gets lucky um so um but uh no um so you know what i'll just think about that episode and i'll feel better about when he leaves the office and they have that hug i'll feel like it's deserved because of that episode that's true there you go that's a good one. Um, okay, my number one is the episode called The Injury. It's the one where he clamps his foot in the George Foreman grill. Ooh. I think that episode is really funny. I think the idea for it is insane. His injury is insane. It's so stupid. And then Dwight gets a concussion trying to drive to rescue him. Oh, and uh, then is like obviously going crazy, <laughs> and yeah. he's the way Pam, Jim, and Pam know is that he's being really nice to them, is that yeah. he's not well. So they have to like decide that they want to take care of Dwight, and they're the ones actually like looking after him and like telling Michael that he has to take him to the hospital, yeah. and all the while Michael is like complaining about just one of the dumbest injuries you could possibly have where he clamped his own foot in an electric grill because he likes to have bacon in the morning. So <laughs> he turns on a grill that is evidently next to his bed in which he lays out strips of bacon. So, I mean, you can't beat that. That's a really oh. funny injury. That's my number one. Yeah. Uh. Um, let's see. Um, um, yeah, uh, I think you're totally right, Ari. Um, thing that's really funny, I like how kind of <laughs> pathetic the Michael character makes himself in the episode and the kind of like just like the crutches and he really plays it up, but he also is hurt so like you know some people handle deal with pain differently so you know it's just important to realize that but um it's pretty funny <laughs> um, so uh um my number one is christmas party um yes that's a good one the Secret Santa is so good, and it's another good Michael episode for how he's not happy with, like, 
the oven mitt that Phyllis gave him. So he changes the game so he gets a good gift. And he gets Ryan an iPod because he really wants to impress Ryan. And he knows an iPod's a good gift. And that at the time, iPods were really new. So I think it was like yeah. 500 bucks or something where the price went down substantially in like a year. <laughs> but um, no, he got one as soon as it came out. So that's a fun storyline. It's a sweet Jim and Pam episode where Jim gives Pam the teapot and Pam finds like the yearbook picture, which is a callback to a previous episode of when Pam goes to a party at Jim's house. So that's sweet. That's nice. And the hot sauce packet and Pam put it on a hot dog because she thought it was ketchup, even though it's clearly marked. Um, it's like fire sauce and it's just Taco Bell and Taco Bell doesn't do hot dogs. I know. Dogs, but what I guess she didn't. Thinking? What is I she guess thinking? She, I guess she didn't actually read the packet. It's so okay. <laughs> Which is weird for Pam because I feel like she's very pragmatic and I feel like she is a very logical character. Like she's not that motivated, but I feel like she's a very logical character. So True. I'm really surprised that she'd make that mistake. But maybe she was so. She just thought maybe there were other other ketchup packets in the vicinity. Maybe maybe she reached into a packet drawer uh -huh. and um, accidentally grabbed a Taco Bell hot sauce. Yeah. Thinking that the red signified a ketchup substance would be within. <laughs> like how I dressed up that sentence. Absolutely. Um that is a good theory. Um, uh, maybe she's colorblind and she thought the packets look similar. So she's it's not really ex explained if Pam can see color. I think she probably can, but um, well, the colors are the same. <laughs> it's true. Um, once like a brighter red. Oh, and, and then you think she would pay more attention to the label, which is fire. So it, it can't be colorblind. Cool. All right, so we can rule that out. So the Pam investigation to whether um, how she put a hot sauce, how she put a hot sauce on a hot dog is still on kind time. of, yeah, it's, it's that open investigation. Case. Yep, it's still open. The, it's a cold case, but it's an open case. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> um, so that's interesting. And then um just the gifts to get for each other are really funny um ryan opens the nameplate that's for kelly and then has kelly's name on it and ryan's like yep for kelly <laughs> so um <laughs> yeah, that's funny. yeah i that was the first time i'd ever heard of that kind of christmas game where you go around and open random gifts that yeah. were like specifically picked for a person yeah it seems like, bad i don't really like that Oh, uh, um, it's feel... fun when it's like when the intention was not to give gifts to specific people, I guess that's fine. I guess I'd, I'd done that in an, at, at an office before, like that sort of Christmas party where you just bring in like a random item yeah. that costs yeah. like 15 to $20. Yeah. I got a frying pan out of that kind of a party once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a bath bomb when I didn't have a bathtub in my apartment. So that was oh, cool. Man. That's. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, did you have a shower? I had a shower, but I had no use for the bath bomb. I was, I just gave them to someone else. I was like, I won these at like a Christmas on in a Christmas game, but I don't have a bathtub and nobody like stole them from me. So yeah. I just gave them to somebody. It didn't matter though. It's just office Christmas. Yeah. It's totally cool. Um, <laughs> um, and I'm not Christian, so oh, okay. <laughs> I'm never expecting a, a good Christmas gift. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that is a good point about that. But, you know, I guess that's why they like, try to say holiday party now, well, like rather than Christmas party. It's a holiday party. And it's all right. I've never been insulted by that if somebody says Christmas party. 
but it's all fine. It's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I really liked that episode and uh, uh, Creed giving Jim a shirt from his closet is also kind of funny. Oh yeah, um, yeah. That's really funny. And the exchange where Jim is like, he obviously totally forgot about the party and then just went to his closet this morning and pulled out this shirt and put it in his bag. And then it just cuts to Creed and he's like, that's exactly what happened. It's really funny. uh... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I like that it explains the thought process behind like what they like it shows what they do and then it basically comments on what, the situation that's going on to kind of like weave the narrative and um very similar to the tv show survivor um which a lot of the which some of the camera people came from the show survivor so it, it makes sense that they would kind of have the confessional type aspect that you've seen the show survivor so um that does make sense that's interesting yeah, um, but I think part of the, I think that's part of the reason why Office is so popular because it has that storytelling element to it, and also them doing the reactions. Like honestly, reactions are what make a lot of things funny. So showing that kind of reactionary humor um, through them talking to the camera and like the documentary aspects of it, I think is like really funny. Um, and like super clever and it's almost like the show doesn't have a laugh track like the show's kind of a sitcom mockumentary but it doesn't have a laugh track so them reacting in the interviews with the camera people is like or the producers is like kind of like a laugh track because they're reacting to it so it elicits a response from the viewer um yeah which I think is really smart and really clever. And it obviously works. Like the office is wildly popular. <laughs> so I, I think that's a really f- kind of fun mechanic that you you maybe don't get when you're watching it as a little kid. You're like, why are they doing this? But then you see it a few times and you start to get it. And then like jokes that you don't get right away, but you get you get after a while are the kind of inside jokes I, I find really effective. And they're usually really funny. So, you know, it's kind of, it's, the type of show that grows on you and as soon as you kind of get the humor it's going for i feel like it's a really funny show and it is one of my favorite shows when i kind of started watching it i really enjoyed it agreed i love that show i've watched it more than any other show i think it's the best thing to turn on in the background and not pay attention to but i i that is probably only because it was on while I was a kid, honestly. And I'm sure people have that relationship with something else. But anything that was like that era of like NBC sitcoms to me is like 30 Rock or uh, The Office or even like Community. I used to love Community. That stuff I will just like, that's like comfort, comfort TV. I'll like turn it on and clean the living room or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Feel free to cut this out, and I I know we were planning on doing ten episodes of Seinfeld, but we have been recording okay. for at least an hour and forty minutes, so I don't think anybody will want to listen okay. to a three hour long podcast <laughs> okay. of us talking about two shows. Do you agree? Um, I think this is a good time to stop. Yes. I think this is probably a good um, ending point. And I feel like we really caught into kind of the nuts and bolts of like our favorite office episodes and what kind of made them like work for us. So I feel Absolutely. like that we accomplished that. Goal. So um, that was good. Um, maybe we could do a part two. Yeah, I would do a part two. If we talk about Seinfeld. I'll rewatch some episodes. I'll finish that. Oh, never mind. I won't talk about the illegal things I do. I'll find I'll find a, a legal stream of it and I'll do it. As soon as they put it back up on Netflix, we yeah. will do this episode again. Uh, okay. When those Seinfeld episodes are available for viewing. Uh, okay. That was nice um, seeing you, Drew. 
Yeah, man. Um, it was awesome seeing you too, Ari. And thank you so much for uh, being on the show. Sure. This was fun, dude. Thanks so much for having me. Have a good one. You too, Ari. Goodbye.